Explorer, welcome to Zagreb, Croatia's capital city. Welcome to another Traveling Foxes vlog. I am Natasha, one half of the Traveling Foxes. I'm so excited to share you Zagreb and we're going to be exploring the city from a traveler's perspective. There's a lot of hills here and stairs. I was not prepared for that many steps. This morning, I actually went on a tour so that I'm prepared to give you guys some fun facts about Zagreb. So it's not my first time here in Zagreb. I've actually been here multiple times, but it is the first time that I am exploring the city on my own and really trying to learn more about the city. Croatia is kind of like a second home to me. I have explored Croatia in different ways, like going to the coast, going on wine tours and all of that is like amazing. Croatia is really one of my favorite countries in Europe but it is actually really nice to explore the capital city. I went to Guru Walk where you can find a lot of free walking tours and I booked through this company called Free Spirit Tours. They have a couple of walking tours around Zagreb. Aside from the fact that the tour guide was really engaging, I would have to say it's one of my favorite tours that I have done in Europe. I think because I don't really know what to expect. We're starting our walking tour in the bustling Banja Lacic Square. As you can see, this area is always busy, with numerous events and activities taking place, as it's also the commercial district of Zagreb. Our Croatian guide was incredibly enthusiastic and kicked off our tour with an intriguing fact. Zagreb was historically divided into two settlements, Zadec and Kapto. During medieval times, these two settlements had an uneasy rivalry, and one of their notable battlegrounds was called the Bloody Bridge. We are now stepping into the Bloody Bridge. Interestingly, despite its name, the bridge appears as an ordinary narrow street today, leading to Zagreb's most vibrant street, adorned with lively bars, restaurants, and trendy cafes. Our first exploration took us to the historic upper town, or Gornigrad, the oldest part of Zagreb. As we went further uphill, we discovered the Stone Gate, which holds great significance to the town even today. Originally constructed in the 13th century as one of the main gates leading to the medieval upper town, the stone gate is home to Zagreb's most important shrine. Inside, a painting of the Mother of God miraculously survived a massive 17th century fire that consumed everything else. The gate is now protected by an artistically forged iron fence with square stone slabs engraved with the words Vala Ti meaning thank you. Visitors regularly come here to light candles and express gratitude to the lady for her protection. Speaking of prayer, not too far from here is the renowned St. Mark's Church, characterized by this vibrant, multicolored Lego roof. The stories shared by our guide were incredibly entertaining. So the Lego church was built in the 13th century, but it was destroyed and renovated many times. And we could have spent even more time there. However, we had to make our way to a curious tower before noon struck. A crowd had gathered, eager to witness what was about to happen. Many legends and theories surround the tradition of firing a deafening cannonball. Precisely at noon, every single day for the past 146 years. Regardless, it's an eccentric tradition that keeps everyone on their toes. And before we head back to Lower Town, we can't miss the opportunity to visit the shortest funicular railway in the world. So we are now at the upper part of Zagreb town and there is a lower town and there is a funicular railway that goes down. <laughs> and it's funny, it's because it is the shortest funicular railway, I don't know if in Europe or in the world, but it is pretty short and they said that it only lasts about 60 seconds. Honestly, riding that funicular railway doesn't really make sense and I think it's just a huge tourist trap, so I'm gonna skip it. Um, 
but if you do want to try it out it doesn't really break the bank it's only like less than a euro to try it out and if you want to do the quickest way to go down you can always do it as well <laughs> Continuing our walking tour, we descend toward this towering cathedral. Its twin spires can be seen from afar, and it has been under construction for many years now. Why, you may ask? Well, if you explore Zagreb, you'll notice that construction is a common sight. This cathedral in particular has endured throughout the years as a symbol of perseverance. Despite being raided, destroyed, burnt, and damaged by devastating earthquakes, since its establishment in the 13th century, it still stands tall today. A funny fun fact is that 60% of the city hasn't seen it without any scaffolds. So our guide shared numerous fascinating stories. But if there's one fun fact to take away from this video, it's about this store we're passing by. Did you know that neckties originated in Croatia? I was amazed to learn this on our tour. It is said that Croatian military personnel from the 17th century wore a piece of red cloth tied around their necks as they fought during the French war. The French king was so fond of this accessory that he popularized it as a cravat or tie, making it fashionable and mandatory during royal gatherings. Cool, right? Let me eat first because I am so hungry after the tour. I haven't eaten, but I found a really cool spot which is just it, which has the view of the Dolach Market. And I'm just having some traditional. I knew a thing or two about Zagreb since I do come here quite often but I haven't really explored it from a traveler's perspective. Anyway, a little context where I am today, I'm actually in this little park um, which is like away from the crowded streets. I really like it here because it's quiet uh, but it's still so close to the center, to the city center where all the hustle and bustle is. So I'm really happy that I went to this tour because I got to learn a lot of interesting facts, hear a lot of stories, and even saw a live cannonball. I'm not going to bore you with all the facts because I think it's better to do the tour yourself but I do want to share my perspective and why I think Zagreb is a European city you definitely need to visit. There's a lot more to learn about the vibrant Zagreb. Like I said, Croatia is going to be my second home next to the Netherlands and then Philippines. So I guess third home. Comment below if you have any questions or anything that you're curious about Zagreb or Croatia in general. Maybe I can cover that in my next videos. For now, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next vlogs.